I'm T Randy Corgan from Teamsters Local 1932, and some of the things that we've been doing in the region is uh, trying to bring awareness on a bad development. Uh, as we just laid out that the jobs are not paying very well in the area, there's a reason for it. It's called decades of bad development. Uh, it's called a, 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 not a regional approach to looking at what jobs are coming to the area and trying to create some benchmarks as to what these jobs should be paying. Uh, as an example, many of the jobs that are in the Inland Empire are the same jobs that were on the Alameda Corridor in Los Angeles and paying more in the 1980s than they are today. Uh, the exact same jobs. They've just been moved because of the so-called cheap dirt, and then people were taken advantage of because somebody brought jobs to the area, uh, and they weren't jobs. They were actually a relocation of jobs. Uh, and then you had the proliferation of bad jobs, temporary workforce, which has created a vacuum. Uh, a, a huge vacuum has been created as a result of this high turnover temporary workforce, and as we can see, the contingent workforce has been the largest growing sector nationally, as well as here in the region. There's hundreds of thousands of those jobs in the area. You get this high turnover uh, and proliferation of these jobs going on for a long period of time, it ends up creating a, a training void, the ability uh, to keep people in the same job for a long period of time and to have a high skill in those jobs. A lot of people think that warehouse jobs and transportation is not a high skill. That's not true. We represent tens of thousands of people in that industry, and there's a lot of high-skilled jobs in those industry, and they shouldn't be paid $12 an hour. They should be paid a, a, a reasonable wage. Uh, the other thing we're bringing awareness on is the suppressed uh, labor force in the region. As the statistics show and the studies show, there's a tremendous amount of that. And trying to uh, give you an example, a lot of people celebrated Amazon for saying, oh, we're going to start everybody at $15 an hour. Like, really? You're going to start them at 15 bucks an hour and you all want to be patted on the back? That's crazy. Like, there are certain industries that should be starting at 20 21 22 $24 an hour, not being celebrated. Oh, we're going to pay everybody 15 bucks an hour. Um, bringing an awareness to those types of subjects, as well as bringing the community, elected leaders, and small business together. We've created what they call what we call as a Teamster Advantage program. We have more than 400 small businesses that we in the region that we've partnered up with and allow... Uh, uh, our members access to by given way of discounts. We're not charging those small businesses because what we want our members to do is shop at those small businesses and to create a little bit of local economy to where people are spending their dollars locally uh, and, and they're being more responsible so that we can try to hold those tax dollars accountable. And the last thing I want to talk about is really exposing the large scale tax abatements, credits, and, and um, uh, sales tax rebates that these corporations and developers have received sometimes decades after development is over. And when you look back on billions of dollars being pulled out of the local economy and you have people struggling, and then the question is, well, our, our city's broke or our area's broke, we don't have the money, well, would you stop giving it away and then producing bad jobs? So we can actually look at developments that gave away a tremendous amount of incentives and lots and lots of money and tax incentives and then literally produce no good jobs. Uh, so what we're doing is trying to bring an awareness to the region on that subject and collaborating with academia, small business, uh, community leaders and elected leaders. Uh, and we've been, we've been, I believe we've been successful on that. It's only the beginning, there's a lot of work to do. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you. Uh, for a lot of the jobs in the warehouse industry and what a lot of people have written off as non-skilled jobs. First of all, that's not true. Um, I. I'm a guy that came out of a warehouse. I used to throw boxes. Um, and fortunately for myself, I've been able to work my way through the ranks and, and be where I am today. But the industry's evolved tremendously. There's a lot of, uh, obviously, technology and automation. There's a lot of areas that is, there's an opportunity for us to get in front of and actually build a training component uh, to move people to the highest level. Because here's why. Uh, most of the jobs in which we represent in the warehouse industry, and there are tens of thousands of them in, here in the region, uh, they're making very, very good money. Some of them upwards of more than $100,000 a year throwing or moving boxes. Yes, they're working very hard. It's a very hard job. Uh, but there's also some skills that can be developed, and those employers are always asking us, where do we get the best of this field? Because they're having a hard time, as, as, as the other panelists had said, that these jobs are looking for people. We, every single day we have requests coming in saying, hey, I need 10 positions, 20 positions, 50 positions, 100 positions. We're really having a hard time keeping people in these, in these jobs. Um, so uh, we're, trying to do, we're, we're currently developing that training center to fill that void 
and to, and to fix that vacuum. Um, because there's another, this is where the downer's gonna come in, is that I think in a lot of areas we've regressed in the region on the subject because of the suppression of wages, uh, because of the suppression of wages in certain jobs where people think that working in a warehouse is, shouldn't be a high paying job. Or let's, let's take the janitor as an example. Why are we currently in a society where we don't, where we don't appreciate the janitor with good wages and benefits? You know, I think we've all been in a situation where we're running to the bathroom, we get there, we're happy as hell that the janitor did their job that day, right? <laughs> There's every single day we take for granted certain infrastructure that's happening for us, building maintenance and, and what people call, what we're trying to categorize is not good paying jobs. Who, who made that up? Those, are, those should be decent paying jobs. Maybe they're not making $150,000 a year, but at the end of the day, just saying they only deserve 11, 12, or $13 an hour, or $15 an hour, how can you buy a home in the Inland Empire? As cheap as they say housing is here, which I don't know if you all try to buy a home lately, it's not all that cheap. How many of you have tried to buy a house on $15 an hour? Or $20 an hour? It's a little, it's a little difficult. And so I think that the area, these vacuums that have been created in the void that suppress these wages in certain areas has to be filled. We're looking at ways that we can fill that, not only through the training center, but not abandoning the hundreds of thousands of jobs that are already doing that work. I keep hearing people in this region over the last decade talk about what we need to do going forward I get that we have to talk about the future, but we have to look at the jobs we left behind. We have to look at what we're on top of, and there are, there are, there are tens of thousands of jobs in this region that are sweatshop conditions where people are being exploited right underneath our nose, right here, right on our soil. We complain about all these other countries and their so-called working conditions. At the end of the day, those same working conditions are happening right here. And I think what's happened is, is that people start getting into these training modules and, and saying, well, we gotta look for higher education jobs or higher skilled jobs. What about the regular jobs that need to pay a decent wage to? And at the end of the day, we have to make sure that we're paying attention to that. So I'm not trying to be a downer on this subject. I think it's very important to mention. Not at all, I think it's- uh, It really confirms a lot of things that we believed was the case and that we've been talking about for a few years. And to see that this has actually uh, been solidified by some real research, not just some of us that have been doing the job for 25 years, sitting in people's living rooms, uh, talking to them and hearing their stories uh, about what they're having to go through every day uh, at work. Uh, it's, uh, I can tell you I've had some very compelling conversations over a dinner table with people that were just looking to try to get a little bit better way of life uh, while they're in the face of their employer who's uh, exploiting them, threatening them, I'm trying to scare the bejesus out of them uh, because they're just because they're simply trying to organize, which is their right. Um, and so to answer the question specifically as to what it should be is uh, there's this interesting, I got to say something before I specifically answer it. I hear people when they go to work for Amazon, we've, we've interviewed thousands of people that work, went to work for Amazon. And one of the things that they're told is, well, if you do this, if you do that, and you do this, you can be here. And you've got a situation where six, seven, eight thousand people have to go through this turnstile for a narrow strip of 10 jobs. What happened to the day when people said, you know what, you're gonna have a good job now, and then if you, if you want upward mobility and you get some training and do these other things, it's even better when you get through that door because we all know not everybody's gonna make that narrow path. Uh, when you gotta go through 6,000 people and only 100 of them are gonna make the promised land, we got a problem there. Um, and that Amazon, I call it the Amazon effect when you're hiring somebody, is, is very problematic. And you're talking tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands in this region because they're not the only employer that's doing it.